How has man tried to shape civilization? Some raised armies, only to find defeat on the battlefield. Others intoxicated the masses with warped vision. Those men you can find on college campuses. One man thought books, arts, and manners were essential for the preservation of civilization. As one of the original sections of National Review, the Books, Arts, and Manners section celebrates William F. Buckley's lifelong commitment to reviewing cultural output as well as achievement. I'd like to begin by asking Mr. Fiedler whether he believes American culture is, on the whole, interested in itself. Yes, I mean, uh, America culture, American culture, in a certain sense, is interest in the self. Uh, the most characteristic thing about Americans is they always have their eyes on each other and themselves. Self-examination is at the heart of the whole thing. There was a time when all the arts existed in the courts. And serious art was inseparable from court art in every field. Now this began to change in the 19th century, most strikingly in literature, when the novel became so popular and at the same time such a spectacular form of art. Mm -hmm. uh, this absolutely broke literature wide open. I think the actions of the people in my novel are, I think, pretty much symptomatic of um, this new generation that's coming about, this generation that was sort of brought up under this, the looming guidance, I guess, of MTV and video, flash, movie scene. What I'm curious about is what odd literature have you read uh, that would be considered, like, quote, subversive, like Henry Miller, that you like? In other words, what are your real literary tastes? Well, they're eclectic. Yeah. Is the, is in fact the appetite for sex and violence greater today than 50 years ago, and if so, why? I think sex and violence have been part of uh, drama since uh, the Romans and certainly the Elizabethans. I often think that a lot of people's anger at the oil companies is based upon the fact that all they've seen on TV are villainous, scheming, heartless businessmen. So they begin to think that all businessmen in real life are like that. When I first started reading National Review, I actually read the magazine from the back to the front because the book section was where some of the most rich and lively material appeared and today Books, Art and Manners remains a vital part of National Review's mission. It's where we write about books, about ideas, about culture, in other words about everything that's enduring. Freedom anticipates and contingently welcomes and profits from what happens following the cal calisthenics of the free mind always supposing that that freedom does not lead the mind to question the very value of freedom or the authority of civil and moral virtues so to designate themselves. There are enough practitioners in this room to know that a journal concerned at once to discharge a mission and to serve its readers needs to be comprehensively concerned with the flora and fauna of cultural and political life. We have done this in National Review.